next couple of messages, I want to speak primarily to the married people. If you want your marriage to get stronger, the single most important thing you can do is remember that love is a choice. The worst thing you can do is assume that love is an uncontrollable emotion or something that you just fall into. We just fell in love. The problem with that, other than that it's not reality, is that you can just as easily fall out of love. As soon as the honeymoon is over and the new spouse smell wears off, you assume it's because you just fell out of love and it's time to quit and trade up. In that regard, Disney has ruined many marriages with that line, and they lived happily ever after. Those of us with marriages that are going the distance know that's just not reality. It's not. There's plenty of happy, absolutely there is. But there's some times that just aren't. And there's a lot of hard work. That's reality. Right? Couples with healthy marriages that are going the distance don't spend as much time talking about being in love as they do acting in a loving way. To help us understand that, one psychologist offers the triangular theory of love. He got his data by interviewing thousands of couples with one criteria. You had to be married to the same person for 50 years. That was it. Uh, racial background, economic, social, religious, none of that mattered. If you were married to the same person for 50 years, he asked you one question, what does love look like? What does it mean to you? And consistently, he got the same answer. They started talking about the same three things. And he used those three things to develop this triangular theory of love. The three things are passion, intimacy, and commitment. Passion is the raw, sensual, biological side of love. Passion is hot, and it's physical, and it often leads to sex. Passion is what gets relationships started in the first place. It's what draws us to someone. You didn't pick your spouse because you initially thought he was ugly. That's the role passion plays. It gets relationships started. Now, passion can be shallow and self-seeking if it's not linked with intimacy. Intimacy is about emotions. It's the warm side of love. If passion is hot, intimacy is warm, right? Because it produces friendship and companionship. And it allows you to get to know one person more than anybody else and allow that one person to get to know you more than anybody else. That's the companionship that comes from intimacy. Couples who don't have it struggle to communicate and they feel like they're living as two strangers in the same house. Commitment is the grown up, mature, deliberate side of love. It's the willful thinking side that says, no, I love you. Not because of how you always make me feel, but because I picked you. You're the person I'm going to do life with. That's what commitment says. I'm here regardless. Sure, I would like for maybe passion to be something different, but I'm here anyway. And yeah, I would like to know you better and be more intimate, but I'm here anyway. It will endure until the other sides of the triangle catch up to be what you want it to be. All relationships change because all people change. It just happens. And often when people say they fell out of love, it's because they don't have the passionate side of the triangle the way that they want it to be. But the good news is you have intimacy to say we can develop our friendship during this time. That's going to endure. Or you still have commitment that says my ring's not coming off. I picked you and I'm staying. We'll get through this together. Now, if your relationship isn't what you would like it to be, if your marriage isn't as strong as you want it to be, let me be your chaplain for a minute and speak directly to you. All relationships can endure. They all can. And your marriage can be a life-giving source for you and your spouse. But it's going to be hard work. It's always hard work. That hard work begins with remembering love is a choice. And that will help you in two ways. The first way is this. It will keep you from being so victimized by your emotions. Right? We know that sometimes our feelings lie to us. And they can't be trusted. Because they can talk us into doing things that are not in our own best interest. In a relationship, that means not acting in a loving way if we don't feel like it. Emotions say, if you don't feel like it, don't do it. Well, not only is that immature, it's just not realistic. The reality is, it is much easier to act your way into a feeling than it is to feel your way into an action. I say that again. It's always easier to act your way into a feeling than try to feel your way into an action. Motivation is a myth. It's one of those crutches we made up to use when we're not ready to do the work that we know we're supposed to do. I promise you, if you're willing to do the work, and act before you feel, your emotions will catch up to your obedience. The second way that uh, this helps us to remember that love is a choice is because it pairs up with something I have seen countless times. Every time I have seen a rocky relationship bounce back and come to life again, and I've seen it happen many times, it's always because one person in that relationship decided they were going to go first. I have never seen two people simultaneously decide they were both going to start to work on a rocky relationship. I've never seen that. It's always because one person decides he or she is going to go first and the other person seeing that starts to come around and catches up. It's always happened that way. 
If you would like your relationship to be more than it is, if you want your marriage to get stronger, then I challenge you to be the hero in your relationship and go first. Start acting in a loving way. Thanks.